today we're going to have a look at some recipes for dry rippled sand. Okay so we've got uh, three colours here. We've got titanium white, we've got yellow ochre uh, and we've got uh, some raw umber. Uh, the raw umber it's not really worth putting out uh, onto the palette, just you're going to need so little of that. But uh, just so that you can see what's going on, I have added it. Now the first colour, starting straight in the middle here, is roughly 50-50 um, yellow ochre and the titanium white. There's your starter for 10. Yellow ochre is a fabulous colour, definitely one to invest in a half decent quality tube of. Uh, it's always series one for the artist quality stuff. Um, lots of variations on the theme, but yeah, for as, as a landscape colour, incredibly useful. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty close. Now, the, uh, the next one, and I've said this a fair few times now, you mix your colours into the white. Because if you do it the other way around, you can end up having to put more and more and more white in. Um, and you end up uh, with just way too much. Um, you end up with a massive pile of colour that you're not going to use. Totally waste all of your white. So just gradually add it in. Let's say we're not a million miles away there. I'm happy with that. Okay, so the next one, in much the same way that we don't want to put the uh, white into the colour because we're going to waste a load, I don't want to put the uh, raw umber here into the yellow ochre for exactly the same reason. So I'm going to start off with a pile of yellow ochre. It's a lovely colour itself. Um, now that's just a little bit too orange. Uh, so what we're going to do here, using a very, very dark colour, and a tiny bit of that dark colour is we're just going to bring it down a little, just cool it off very, very slightly. Use a little bit more. Again, add it gradually, you can always put more in, you can't take it back out. And so we're getting there. Can, if that's just a little bit too bright, too chromatic, put a tiny little bit of white in just to tint it out. Takes the edge off it just a little. Yeah, I think we're there. Now, of course, we do have two other options. We could, let's just divide this. Uh, in half, we could uh, apply the natural complement, so the colour from the other side of the colour wheel uh, from the orange, which is blue. So I'm going to just add a little bit of this uh, ultramarine blue in here. Tiny little bit. Again, this is going to uh, if the colour is way too bright, too chromatic, this is going to knock it towards the middle of the colour wheel. This is going to make it a grey. Now I think that is a good bit closer. You can see the difference here. I've deliberately left that alone. The other option, um, and I'll uh, link to a short I did the other day of mixing uh, neutral grey, is we could do exactly the same thing with a little bit of neutral grey. Well, neutral grey doesn't have a colour leaning of its own, so it's just going to take this sand colour here towards the uh, middle of the colour wheel. But um, both of them are greys, one slightly more chromatic than the other. But uh, yeah, there you go. Two options for cooling this down if it's just too bright. Uh, one using its complement, um, and the other one using a grey that's made up of all colours and therefore contains its complement.
so there we go hope that's been useful if it has please don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next time cheers